Hello, everyone, and welcome to Women in Motorsport. I'm Kobe Lambert from the Podium Fitness, filling in for Joe San Diego this week. With me is regular co-host on this program, Daniel Zeri from Racers, the girls behind from Racers, the girls behind the helmet. And I want to send a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Colin, Mark, Deshell, and Robin for all of your wonderful support. And we encourage all of our viewers to take five minutes after today's show and consider joining our Patreon page. There's a lot to discuss today. A former Formula 2 and Super Formula driver joining the NTT IndyCar Series, a female racer making history at the Chili Bowl, and more stories to discuss. But first, let's start off with the big news coming out of IndyCar. And yesterday, as we reported on Grid Tonight, AJ Ford Racing is expanding to a three-car operation and driving the number 11 Roquette Chevrolet, Tatiana Calderon. She'll run the road and street courses this year in IndyCar, but, but won't do the ovals. Going to a team like Ford in the process of rebuilding with young drivers, she'll have Dalton Kellett and the 2021 Indy Lights champion Kyle Kirkwood as teammates. In recent years, Tatiana had some great opportunities to race in Formula 2, Super Formula in Japan, and do some sports car racing as well with an all-female driver lineup. So, so, Daniel, the first question, for IndyCar fans unfamiliar with Tatiana Calderon, what information can you provide about her race and background, especially her most recent involvement in FIA Formula 2, Super Formula, and the FIA World Endurance Championship? Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Kobe, for, for hosting this, uh, this show with me. Uh, good afternoon to everyone uh, in, in the U.S. As you said, it, it was really the, the big news of, uh, of, this, uh, of this week. Uh, Tatiana Calderon was uh, had tested uh, with AJ Foyt uh, in, in July, back in July last year. Uh, and she has been in, in contact with the team uh, since then, and uh, she I, I, I spoke with her during a, a, a round of the World Endurance Championship, and she was really, really keen in, in trying to, to get to IndyCar. I think she really deserves that, uh, that seat. I'm really happy for her. Uh, she is one of those drivers that once you, you know, once you, you get to know, to know them, and they're super kind, really, really, some, some of the drivers that uh, really deserve the best. And uh, for, for, as you said, for, for anyone not familiar with, with Tatiana, she has been racing uh, previously on the uh, road to Indy uh, because she, she was uh, racing in the US uh, prior to, to getting to, uh, to uh, Europe um, in the Mazda, in the Pro Mazda Championship, then went to, to Europe and she raced in Formula 3, uh, in, uh, firstly in the Formula 3 that now is uh, it's called the Euro Formula. Uh, and then went uh, stepped up to uh, to the uh, FIA Formula Three Championship, the one uh, that follows Formula One in uh, in the uh, European in mainly the European race. Um, and she was a uh, a pretty uh, consistent point scorer in in FIA Formula Three. I would say that uh, she was really fast in in uh, Euro Formula, um, and then was one of the first. Uh, Alice Powell was the first one to score points in in the third tire level. Uh, of Formula One, so in the, it was called GP3 back then. Uh, but Tatiana was really a consistent point scorer, and she was the first uh, to, to really to break that glass ceiling that we often say that female drivers often find at Formula Three level. And she uh, was promoted to Formula Two in 2019 uh, with the BW, uh, with the um, uh, BWT uh, team uh, uh, HWA. She was the uh, teammate of uh, Antoine Hubert, the, the driver that uh, uh, really unfortunately lost his life in, uh, in Spa Francorchamps in 2019. She had a really, really unfortunate season uh, in, in 2019, Tatiana. Um, they had some, some car issues. Uh, the, the, the car was definitely not perfect. She struggled a little bit um, technically. Um, and, and but still, she, she she was trying to make some some progress, and and then she had a, the the big opportunity uh, in in uh, in 2020 uh, to to go to Japan to Super Formula, which is uh, like the fastest car after Formula One. Uh, those cars uh, are uh, produced by Dallara, the, the chassis, and then you have two uh, the different engine manufacturers, Toyota and Honda, um, and they have massive. Uh, uh, downforce level. They are the, the, the fastest car after Formula One. Um, and she said that in, in Super Formula, she kind of bounced back uh, after a very tough season in 2019. Uh, she was really making good, good progress. In the first race, she was really fast. She was battling with some of the drivers that were uh, really front runners in, in the year before. 
Um, but COVID really made everything more difficult for her because uh, she was also, as you as you mentioned, she was part of the all female team in Richard Mill Racing in the in WEC in the World Endurance Championship, uh, and that was also a big challenge for her because she was making uh, her sports car debut um, and was also tr trying to 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 make the, her first uh, 24 hour Le Mans. So that was really the, the big goal for for Tatiana. Um, and, and those two programs that in a, in a normal year, let's say, uh, would have been more easy to pursue. Uh, with COVID restrictions, it was really difficult because uh, Japan had really strict uh, travel restrictions. Uh, so she had to choose uh, some of the rounds and she missed uh, most of the, of the Super Formula uh, season, uh, missed the, most of testing. Uh, a couple of races also in WEC, so it was it was kind of, kind of trouble for her due to the COVID restrictions in, in, in travel. Um, this year again, she uh, she did uh, both the the programs, and again it was the same, pretty much the same uh, situation for her. Uh, even though in, in uh, WEC she was really making a lot of progress, she was really fast. She was starting to, to be really fast in the LMP2 car. Uh, but as I said before, in July she had the opportunity to test uh, the, the AJ Foyt car to be thanks to the to the partnership with the Rocky sponsor, and she has been working since then to, to get that seat. And luckily she will have the chance in the in the road course of this year. Yes, and Tatiana Calderon is definitely driven quite a quite a quite a diverse lineup of race cars. Formula Two, all of the pressure in Formula Two with with all of those drivers trying to get into Formula One, take that next big step in their racing careers and Super Formula. We we all know that championship is 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 respected by many all all around the world, and and the drivers say those cars are very challenging as well. And that's where the 2021 IndyCar champion Alex Polo came from. That's when I first learned to Polo in in Japan racing those Super Formula cars and how how well he took to those. And and F, and the FA World Endurance Championship you mentioned it, it, it was definitely something new for Tatiana, but she but she did the best she she, she could over there and adapted to the challenges of sports car racing in the multi class environment where you have where you have the hyper cars now LMP2 and you have the GT Pro and GTM categories and now Tatiana's gonna be coming to the states in 2022 looking to try the NTT IndyCar series and, and based on what I've read about Tatiana's driving style it really seems like the IndyCar is gonna suit her driving style better than anything she's driven so far and, and she actually just participated in a test at Sebring International Raceway with with AJ Ford racing and she was and I believe she was like four tenths slower than the 2021 Indy Lights champion Kyle Kirkwood her teammate this year so that's very encouraging for Tatiana considering she hasn't had a lot of time in the IndyCar yet and to and to be only four tenths slower than Kirkwood that's definitely an encouraging sign as she gets more laps under her belt I expect her to become more competitive in her rookie season in IndyCar and and overall in IndyCar competition the last time we saw a woman racing full-time was 2013 with Simona Di Silvestro and, and while Tatiana Calderon won't race full-time in 2022 she's the first female driver since Pippa Mann in 2016 at Pocono Raceway to enter an IndyCar race not named the Indianapolis 500 and last week on Grid Tonight we made the big announcement that we're going to be adding the W Series to this year's Grid Ranking because we didn't have any females racing full-time or even part-time in this series we cover in this raid and so with Tatiana Calderon although it's going to be part-time really good to see a, a, a female racer a part of the grid ranking this year and we understand that representation matters so it's really nice to see tatiana calderon get on a shot to prove herself in the united states and and as i as i mentioned about her test performance at sebron her first test was at the meadow house sports car course as you can see right right here on the screen right here and at that test session that's when aj ford racing got really serious about bringing her to indycar because they were really impressed with how she performed and all and the two photos you saw all courtesy of aj ford racing so daniel could tatiana calderon's presence in indycar get more female races an opportunity to race over here and who are some of the female drivers that should be on indycar's radar in the future yeah it's, uh, w well said uh, about tatiana and uh, I, that's that's a really interesting and, and difficult question to be honest um, I think, uh, as you said, uh, Simone Di Silvestro would like to be back in a full-time ride uh, with the Pareta Autosport. We know that 
uh, the, that team that last year entered the Indy 500 was looking forward to actually kind of join the series also not on a full-time basis. So I think uh, um, that that would be probably still on the table if they can if they can uh, put the, the 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 funding together. Uh, but also other other drivers that are uh, that could be on IndyCar's radar. I think uh, Alice Powell and Jamie Chadwick could be one could be uh, interested in in, in joining uh, IndyCar. Uh, also, other other drivers from 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 W Series, for example, you know Sabre Cook. Even though she struggled a little bit last year in W Series, she was really uh, keen on on trying to pursue uh, the the the, Indy, uh, the Indianapolis uh, 500 road. Uh, but also some some other some other interesting Isla Agron, for example, other uh, interesting female drivers uh, that have been racing in single seaters. Uh, uh, both in Europe and uh, in, in the US. I think there are, there's probably not many ready yet, um, like Tatiana, for example, um, apart from probably from uh, Alice Powell and, and Jamie Chadwick, uh, but also Emma Kimilainen, even though she, she, we know that she will be back in, in W Series this year. Um, but yeah, I think those, those are the, the first names that straight come to, to my mind. Yes, those are some really interesting names you listed. And, and and for me, if I had to make a prediction of which female racer could potentially be in IndyCar next, I, I think I have to set a name that's probably at the top of most people's list, and that's the two-time W Series champion, Jamie Chatwick. I think she's ready for that, take that next big step in her racing career. A lot of people think she's ready to be an FI Formula 2 now to get the opportunity, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen in 2022 because I believe almost nearly – Every seat in Formula 2 has been taken so far. So if Jamie wants to go to Formula 2, that would have to wait till 2023. But if not that, how, 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 how about IndyCar? I think that would be a really great opportunity for Jamie Chatwick to, to, to showcase her skills and see, and see what she can do over here. And, I, and over the offseason, I, I read a few reports that Alice Powell was looking at opportunities outside of W Series, thinking about maybe coming over to the States, racing in the IMSA. WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and Alice Powell, I believe she she's already raced in them. So before, I believe it was a one-off at VIR driving a Meyer Shank racing Acura NSX GT3, and she performed extremely well for Meyer Shank. And 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 also Alice was potentially looking at doing some Indy Light stuff. There could still potentially be some seats available in Indy Lights, but I'm not sure if, if she's actively look looking at that right now. And, and also saw IndyCar as potential on her radar as well. But if we were able to get Jamie Chatwick or Alice Powell in the NTT IndyCar series, I think that would definitely be a huge win for the series overall and women in motorsport in general. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, perfectly said. I absolutely agree with, uh, with everything that you said there. Um, yeah, not much to add. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, one of the, the next races, the, the big races that we that we saw last uh, last weekend, uh, it was the 24 hour of, of Dubai, uh, which is uh, kind of the, the first big event of the of the calendar year. Uh, it's a big tradition for for most of uh, the endurance uh, teams and, and drivers uh, to to uh, uh, meet in Dubai for the 24 hour uh, race uh, by Trevin Tick. Um, and we had a quite a, a lot of, of female drivers uh, this year. It, it, also, it is a series that uh, many times have, have featured uh, very talented female drivers. Uh, one of them is, of course, Samantha Tan, the Canadian uh, uh, driver owner of the Samantha Tan Racing. Uh, she was, uh, well, last year she raced for the first time in, in 24 hour series, and it was her first international uh, campaign. And she won six titles last year. She won uh, overall drivers, overall teams, uh, GT4 drivers, GT4 team, junior cup, and female trophy. So definitely a kind of a, a dominant season for uh, for Samantha and her small uh, Canadian team, uh, which is not very small now because it's really expanding. And from a, a, a GT4 entry, they expanded to a two. Uh, and BMW M4 GT3 uh, cars this year. One uh, in uh, lined up in the Pro One, in the GT3 Pro One class, and one in the GT3 uh, M. Uh, so definitely uh, a big step forward for uh, Samantha Tan Racing. 
um, but they, they were not the only, uh, she, was, she was not the only female driver to, to enter the 24 hour of uh, Dubai this year. Also, Jasmine Preissig, a Swiss racer that last year was second in the TCR Championship standings at the end of the, the season with Autorama Motorsport. She, she's back with Autorama Motorsport in number 111 uh, Volkswagen Golf TCR car. Uh, she's pretty experienced in, in touring cars, also racing at the in Schleife uh, during the, the year. Uh, but also we had a few very interesting debuts for, for uh, female racers uh, uh, in, in endurance. Uh, we had Rima Gifali, a, um, who is the very first Saudi female driver to hold a racing license. Uh, she has been racing in Europe for the past couple of years. She is certainly racing uh, quite recently, actually, after uh, women were allowed to to uh, to race to 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 drive on on the street in uh, in Saudi Arabia. She uh, moved to the UK to race in the uh, uh, British Formula Four. She had two seasons in British Formula Four. Uh, had a great development there. Moved up to a British Formula Three, which was then rebranded GB3 last year. Um, and then she is, she is now looking to, to make her step into GT racing and into endurance. And that was the, her very first endurance uh, race. Uh, and then we had also another driver that made her endurance race debut. It was uh, Sophie Hoffmann. Uh, she's a 20 year old uh, German driver. Uh, she raced in the DTM trophy last year in, in the GT4 DTM trophy which is like the uh, stepping stone to, to the uh, to big DTM uh, class. Um, and then uh, uh, Hannah Zellers, she is a, an American driver uh, that uh, will be racing also in the IMSA prototype challenge this year. Um, and then we had also Betty Chen, a driver from Taiwan. Uh, she, is being, she has been racing in, in the past couple of years in touring cars, uh, mainly in, in China. Um, and so it was Quite a big step forward for uh, for Betty uh, to to uh, race in, in GT3 because she was racing in the uh, Leipert Motorsport Lamborghini in GT3. Uh, so kind of a big big step for for her. Um, but it was really exciting to see all of them uh, really doing uh, doing well uh, in, uh, in in Dubai. Um, Samantha Tan had uh, quite. They started from third place in, in GT3 Pro Am uh, and they were really going strong. It was also her first time in a GT3 car, so this is really important to, uh, to remind. Um, and she, they had quite a troubled race because uh, they, they had a problem just before the start of the race. Uh, the car could, could not go into first gear, so they had to start on the pit lane. And then in, in the hectic moments, uh, the, the, the cars did start, and, but then they, they missed the, uh, the, red, the, the red light at the end of the pit lane, so they got straight away a two-lap penalty uh, for Harry Gottsacker, who was behind the wheel. Um, and so it was kind of a messy start for, for them, for the number one car. Um, even though they really, really made good steps forward in, in the first half of the race, they managed to, uh, to climb back into the into podium position in GT3 Pro Am. And during the night, at, at one point, they were leading the, the class. Uh, Samantha really had strong stints in, in, into the night. She had three very solid stints, um, in, despite, uh, as I mentioned, it was her very first GT3 race. But then in the second part of, of the race, uh, uh, they had uh, some more technical troubles, unfortunately. We have to also to, uh, to keep in mind that this was the very first race for the BMW M3 GT4 uh, internationally, because uh, the Samantha Tan Racing was the first team to get the delivery of the of the of the car from from BMW Motorsport from the very first uh, um, customer team to, to get the car. Um, so of course the car still needs a little bit of development, um, but it, it showed good promising space uh, pace. Uh, even though in the in, during the night they had a puncture, then they had a diffuser issue, uh, then a loss of power that. Unfortunately, they, they had to, to fix and, and, and uh, bring the car back into the garage, and so they lost some laps, uh, and they uh, went back to P5 in, uh, in, uh, in class, where they ultimately ended. Uh, Justin Pricing also had a kind of a troubled race at the beginning. Uh, they, um, she, she had a good recovery, though. They had fuel pump issues right at the start, 
Uh, but it had, they had a good recovery and she made it up to P3 in, in class, in PCR, but ultimately her teammates who crossed the line uh, finished in the fourth position in, in PCR. Uh, Sophie Hoffman, as I mentioned, was racing in the high motorsport uh, Audi GT4 category. Uh, she also had pretty good stints. She had also to learn uh, uh, how to, to uh, race in multi-class. Uh, um, so it was kind of a challenge for her, but she did very well. No, made no mistakes uh, racing into the night stints, which is also something a bit challenging for, for a rookie. Um, unfortunately, she was racing with not, not very experienced teammates. And one of them uh, put it into the wall at uh, with five hours left into the in, in the race. So they they, uh, they finished uh, uh, with a DNF, which is kind of unfortunate for 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 Hoffman. But she said that it was one of the most remarkable experiences of, of her career so far. Hannah Zellers had a good race uh, in in P PCX category and uh, also in the PCE uh, division. They were on the podium uh, as we see her. Uh, on the on the standing on the podium uh, in third place in PCX with the EAT BMW M2, um, but and they were also P5 in overall in the uh, PCE um, standing. So that was pretty solid race for uh, for EAT Motorsport. Then we also had uh, Betty Chan, as I mentioned, the uh, Taiwanese driver. Uh, struggled a little bit. She also she had just one stint into the race. She struggled a little bit with with traffic. She was not super uh, experienced uh, with uh, managing traffic and also had a spin and brushed the wall, uh, the tire barrier. Luckily, there were no major damages to the uh, Lamborghini uh, GT3 car. So she quickly rejoined the race and they finished eighth in in class in GT3. Uh, but really, the star of the race was uh, Rima Jafali, the uh, Saudi driver, really impressed uh, with a really strong pace. She was the fastest of the four drivers in, in her crew in the SPS uh, Outsport uh, Mercedes um, and made it up to second in, in the GT3 AM category. Uh, here is the, her uh, uh, car uh, with the same degree of the Mercedes Formula One team. Um, and uh, really, really managed traffic like a senior season racer, made it up to P2, as I mentioned, and finished on the, on the podium in, uh, in, uh, in her class and also in the top 10 overall. So that was a really remarkable uh, GT3 and endurance uh, uh, debut for, uh, for Arima Jafali. The next 24-hour race uh, series will, will, uh, will get underway this weekend at, uh, the, with the sixth hour of uh, Abu Dhabi, even though it is a non-championship race. Uh, none of these drivers will be coming back to Dubai this weekend. Only we will have one female driver with Stefan Cox, uh, who is a Dutch woman who is preparing her uh, Asia Le Mans Series uh, Championship, uh, while all the, the others will be back at the 24-hour Series Championship at Mugello with the 12th hour of Mugello in uh, March. And, and before we move on to the next section, I have some comments in the chat room from Humperdinck. Actually, three comments from Humberdine. First comment says, you, you remember Tatiana Calderon struggling and super forming. You hope she gets on better in India. In 2021, it, last year was really challenging for Tatiana. She didn't get to do the entire season because of all the travel restrictions and her racing program in Europe with the WEC. And, and, I, and I know racing in Japan was really tough because they had some very strict COVID protocols. Leave, leave, leaving and entering the country, which made it really hard for Tatiana Calderon to do her dual WEC and Super Formula program. But ho hopefully, being in stateside this year, it'll be a lot easier for her to find some consistency within of her racing programs. And you also say you miss Simona Di Silvestro racing in IndyCar. Yeah, it was it was really cool seeing how, how Simona ran when she was full time in in, in IndyCar and. And hopefully we'll see her back at the Indy 500 this year with some better luck with Peretta Autosport. I know Peretta's trying to get trying to be on the grid again, once again for the greatest spectacle in racing. And I see you agree with my comment about Jamie Chatwick would would definitely be a great catch for IndyCar. I think Jamie Chatwick would perform really well in IndyCar and, and, and surprise a lot of people. As as we, uh, but if you watched her in W Series, you would not be surprised at all because she's definitely quite a talent. And moving on to our next story, last Saturday night in Tulsa, Oklahoma, history was made in the 36th running of the Chili Bowl Nationals 
over three decades of competition at the biggest major dirt race of the year. And we've and, and we've had women compete at the Chili Bowl and all of the features and heat race and stuff. But never in three decades have we had a woman make the main event. And all of that changed last weekend when 20 year old Kaylee Bryson raced away into the A main breaking a record from 2016 when racer Harley White made her way up to the B main, but couldn't find a way to transfer into the main show. And as for Kaylee Bryson, she's currently racing midgets on the dirt for Keith Coons Motorsport as a Toyota racing development driver. And while most of her racing has occurred on the dirt, she's been getting some experience on pavement as well and actually won her first late model race last year. Whether her features on the dirt tracks around the country, short track pavement racing, or potentially making her way up to NASCAR, Kaylee Bryson is a very talented driver with tremendous upside, a part of the next generation of female racers looking to live out their racing dreams. And the photo you see on the screen, courtesy of Toyota Racing. Daniel, I know the Chili Bowl isn't really big in Europe compared to the United States, but how can making history like Kaylee Bryson, a driver many weren't familiar with before, put female drivers on the map for bigger future opportunities in racing? Yeah, I think uh, you're definitely right. I think this uh, this is a really important uh, event, you know, when, when some of them really make it big and, and make the headlines like Kaylee did uh, last last weekend. It's a really good opportunity for, for some other drivers to uh, to, to, to try to get into, into those big events, you know, because it's, it's, it's uh, ultimately, let's think, uh, for, for example, of uh, Danica Patrick in IndyCar, you know, when uh, she, she uh, made headlines in, 20, in 2005, uh, her first, uh, first time in the Indy 500, uh, it, th that really sparked a, a movement for female drivers uh, trying to get onto the IndyCar scene. And we, we had for a, for a period of time a couple of, of female racers in the city. So I think uh, uh, this, as you, as you mentioned, the, the Chili Bowl and, and uh, uh, racing on, on dirt is, is not particularly um, well known here in Europe. Uh, but as all motor, American motorsports, we are, we are definitely trying to uh, um, to cover more of that, and so figures like uh, and, and events like this are, are very important to inspire some other female drivers, and uh, that one day uh, will hopefully, uh, you know, they, they will have hopefully a, a, a bigger grid in, in, and more uh, um, more participation in, in those championships as well. I've been following Kay Kay Kaylee Bryson's career since la since last year. I've been very impressed with what I've seen from her. She seems like she seems like a driver who who takes everything very seriously and works so hard to be the best that she can possibly be. And after making the A main in the Chili Bowl and 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 I'll and I'll let all our viewers know who are unfamiliar with the Chili Bowl. You have hundreds and hundreds of drivers trying trying to make the main event, and it's extremely hard to make the A main of the Chili Bowl. We have some of the best we have some of the best drivers around the entire country in the United States who go to the Chili Bowl and they and they still haven't sniffed the A main after entering the Chili Bowl multiple times, and it is and it's just extremely hard to do and I and I and it just shows the type of talent that Kaylee Bryson has. Hundreds of drivers entered this event and she, and she was the and she was the final two dozen to make the main show and and that's and that's massive that's why that's why on social media you you saw people going wild over Kaylee Bryson making the A main and all the cheers you heard inside of the Tulsa arena when when everyone knew that she was going to be in the in, in in the big show and and especially when you look at Toyota Racing's driver development program we saw in the last couple of years they had Haley Deegan but they let her, but they let her go to for performance, and so you have to wonder who's going to be their, 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 one of the next young female drivers that are going to develop. And right now, Kaylee Bryson's in the pipeline. And after seeing what we saw at the Chili Bowl in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I think it's going to be really important that they properly invest in Kaylee Bryson because I think she has potential superstar pot potential to do extremely well if 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 they're able to get her on the NASCAR path. I'm not exactly sure if that's uh, if, if that's her path for now, but if she's with TRD, I'm sure it is something that's most likely been discussed. And, and TRD also has Gracie Trotter as well, who, who, who's, who's run really well in the Arkham Menard series, which we'll be talking about in a second with, ironically, Venturini Motorsports, which, and, and they made a big announcement recently. Another female driver, Tony Bridinger, 
the first Arab American female driver in NASCAR. She's going to be running full time in the Arkham Menard Series in the number 25 Toyota. Brightinger becomes the second female racer to announce a full time schedule in the Arkham Menard Series this year, joining Red Jones Racing driver Amber Balkin. The last time a woman ran Arca National full time was 2019 when Haley Deegan finished fourth in the championship. And last year, we had Stephanie Moyer and, as I mentioned, Gracie Trotter. They ran select races in Arca, and Bridget Burgess ran full time on the West Coast in the Arca Menards Series West. Tony Bardinger has worked really hard to get to, to, to this point in racing where she can run a full season and go for the championship. In recent years, she ran a few. Arca races here and there with Venturini and Young's Motorsports. Being in and out of the car makes it hard to build consistency. So we're interested to see how she performs with the same team all year long and being a part of that Toyota Racing Driver Development Program and some of the best equipment that the Arca Menard Series has to offer. It gives Tony Bardinger the best chance to be successful, and we'll be sure to follow her progress weekly here on Women in Motorsports in the photo you just saw courtesy of Venturini Motorsports. Yeah, uh, here in Europe, uh, uh, meanwhile, we had uh, also some other interesting races, uh, namely the uh, GT Winter Series, uh, which is a uh, GT uh, ch championship uh, that is uh, hosting races uh, mainly in Portugal and Spain that in this uh, time of the year have a little bit more uh, have better weather. Uh, but where conditions uh, to race and uh, we had Nerea Marti, the uh, female driver from uh, Spain, from Valencia, that was the rookie of the year in W Series. Uh, she is really, really interesting uh, uh, in, in single seaters, but also she has made her debut in uh, touring cars. So um, that was also kind of a big news uh, last, last month because she was part of the first um, she was chosen by the BMW uh, España, so uh, she is part of the very first uh, uh, manufacturer team from BMW in, in Spain. Uh, here she is uh, behind the BMW M2. Um, she's racing with uh, Delos Milagros, who is a, a kind of experienced uh, uh, driver in, in touring cars, so he is definitely a good teammate for, for Nerea. Uh, in the first race, in the first round in, uh, in Portimao, uh, they were second. Uh, so good good start for, for Nerea. Uh, who, the, these championships, there are uh, three races per weekend, two sprint races, one per each driver, and then an endurance race where they, uh, of course, alternate behind the wheel. And uh, Nerea was second in her sprint race in Portimao, straight off uh in her first uh, first race in, in the touring cars uh and then she won in uh, in uh, nest wheel this weekend so uh, i think uh, not only she's fast in w series in single seaters uh with we call the three cars but she's also very talented uh, uh and a prospect in, in touring cars so i think it's it's really important that she kind of has all the opportunities open she keeps all the opportunities open um, the next race uh, will be in Jerez, so she will be back in, in Spain, in her home country, in, uh, in February. Um, it, it's a four-event uh, season, so it's not really longer. It's mainly uh, for, uh, for preparing the, for, for all the drivers and teams to prepare for their uh, then, uh, summer uh, commitments and, and, and championships. Um, and uh, and she, she will also race uh, with BMW Spain uh, in the uh, Spanish uh, Endurance Championship. So that is also uh, an, an important championship that we will, uh, we will follow in Nerea. Uh, but also we had another uh, kind of important race uh, last weekend, it was a 24-hour race, the 24-hour Le Mans Virtual, which is uh, uh, in, in 2020, it was the first edition of this race. It was launched in 2020 ob for obvious reason for the for the lockdowns where really sim racing became the only uh, opportunity that we could uh, that we could have motor racing in, in some form uh, when the race uh, the, the real 24 hour Le Mans could not uh, go ahead in, in June we had the uh, the virtual race uh, organized by ACO WEC and Motorsport Games so it was such a huge success with a lot of very important drivers also coming from Formula One from IndyCar from from every from all around the, uh, the, the 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 world of the motor racing so they 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 thought about uh, doing a second edition of this race, and uh, it went underway uh, last weekend. 
Every team uh, was uh, uh, informed by two real racing drivers and two uh, professional uh, esports drivers. Uh, that was also interesting because we kind of had um, some some real teams with with uh, the, the very famous drivers, but then they were uh, they were had to keep up the pace with the professional uh, team racers. They, they they are very very fast and know the platforms very well. This race was raced on uh, R Factor Two. Uh, so we know that you know the, the, the software does make a difference sometimes, and we all we had uh, six female drivers as well. Uh, we had Bytske Visser for from the W Series. Uh, we had Logan Hanna, who is a Scottish 20-year-old uh, that is racing in uh, in the um, Ford in Formula Ford in the UK, but had also raced in Formula Four in the UAE in 2019. And then we had the, the uh, W Series, who actually lined up a team. Uh, also, they had a they, their first experience of esports in 2020 when the uh, season had to be cancelled, uh, and then it, it was moved to an all uh, esports championship. And Bicycle is still on that. Uh, Bicycle, after the 2020 experience, uh, they they re she remained very active in, in team racing. She's racing also. She's, she's keeping you know uh, prepared with uh, some uh, professional sim sim racing uh, teams. So she. Is very very um, active in, in the sim racing world, uh, but W Series uh, uh, entered the Fabian Bolvent, the, the driver from Liechtenstein, who went very close to winning her first race in W Series this year. Um, Ayla Argren, and then uh, uh, two um, let's say esports professionals, even though they started their careers in uh, in real racing. Uh, Lyubov Ozretovskaya, uh, who is uh, from uh, Kazakhstan, uh, she's 25. And she started in uh, in uh, in Formula cars because she also raced in Formula Four uh, both in the Southeast Asia and then also in Russia. She was also part of the W Series selections in 2019. Uh, and then we had Emily Jones, a driver from Australia. She started in karting, but then she didn't have the funding to pursue uh, a professional career in in uh, motorsport, so she switched to to esports. And she's now one of the big superstars of uh, of sim racing. She's mainly active in uh, in Gran Turismo, uh, but also in i racing. She she won last year uh, the big championship. She won uh, the uh, the Porsche uh, esports uh, cup. So I think it, she, she is one of the big uh, big stars in in esports. And she was also entering. She was also racing the first edition of the twenty four hour of Le Mans virtual when she was uh, chosen by. Uh, Richard Mir racing uh, in, for for uh, for that race. She, so she raced alongside the Sofia Flores, Tatiana Calderon, and uh, Catherine Legg. And she said that it was kind of a dream for her, you know, to to uh, race together with uh, some of her uh, motorsport heroes like Calderon, Flores, you know, the, the big big names. Um, and and this year she she joined the W Series. Unfortunately for W Series, it all went wrong, very very wrong at the start. Uh, Fabian Baldwin was set to, to take the start for, for the team, but our factor two, the software crashed just 30 seconds before the, 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 the start of the race, and they were kicked out of the server. And unfortunately, our factor two does not allow the race control to uh, add uh, manually a, a team uh, to the server. And so the race was over even before it started for, for, for WC. There was a real, real shame because. Uh, Fabian told us that they were they, they, they had put a lot of effort, a lot of time into preparing this race. Uh, we know that there's a lot of strategy be, behind those races, even though they are virtual and they, they were uh, engineers uh, helping them, you know, for with the strategy. So it was kind of a shame for them. Uh, Bytskevitsa, as we said, it was racing with the Male racing team in the LMP2 class. Uh, she did uh, very, very, very well. Uh, they were also kind of unlucky because uh, uh, they uh, they had a an accident, a crash in the first uh, in the first lap of the race, um, and so they, they lost uh, straight from the first lap three three or four minutes. And so it was all the race it was about uh, recovering, uh, but she did very well. She she did uh, four um, two. Uh, Quadruple stints into the race, uh, into the uh, late evening, and then into the early morning. Uh, they recovered a lot, and they finished P13 in uh, in class and overall. 
Uh, and then we had Logan Hanna, uh, she was racing for ProDrive, uh, which is a very well known team uh, in wheel racing, and they were doing the first uh, uh, race in sports. And also for Logan, it was her very first race in sim racing, interestingly, uh, and her very first endurance race as well. Um, because, of course, we, she also had, she only had raced uh, uh, in single seater before. And uh, in, in the, she also they had problems in in the at the beginning of the race they had uh, some uh, technical issues with, with the server uh, at the very beginning of the race so also they had to to recover uh, a bit uh, but also they finished the P13 in the GTE class uh, in the Aston Martin that we see pictured here uh, and so it was overall a good uh, good event for both Bytska Vister and uh, Logan Hanna. Uh, and Logan told us that she would really love to to, uh, to have another go, maybe in a real car this time in an endurance race, and hopefully one not one day at the very big race of the 24 hour of Le Mans that we know that Bytska Vister has already uh, done two times and finished the one time in the, in the top 10. So. Uh, it was a really, really interesting race. Max Verstappen was leading in, in the early stages. Unfortunately, he uh, crashed uh, in, uh, at, at, towards the, the early hours of the night. And the Team Redline won in both categories, in both, both classes, in both in LMP and GTE. So it was really dominant uh, victory for Redline. Uh, but overall, it was really exciting to see again a, um, a big sim racing event with both racing, a real racing driver and, and sim racer, professional sim racers. It's really crazy hearing what happened to the W Series team, how the race was over before it even started. And knowing what I know about sim racing and, and knowing someone who used to race in the Eden Asgard iRacing Series here in the States, I know, I know the amount of time it takes to put in the sim racing. People like to say, oh, it's just a video game. It's not a big deal. That's not true at all. Sim racing is the real deal. And and as we saw, especially during the early days of the pandemic, sim, sim racing really exploded. And, and and took off and 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 speaking with my friend who used to race in the e NASCAR i racing series, he had to dedicate hours and hours on the sim in order to be the best sim racer that he could be. So 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 it's, so it's not just like I do what I want to do and I can just hop in and go race. You actually have to put in the work to be to to be the best driver to be to make sure you're not making all of those mistakes on the racetrack. So in a, so in a way, it is just like real real life you still have to perfect your craft and and if and if you're and if you spent like all week practicing putting in all those hours of work only for you not to be able to race like that that's definitely very crushing so hopefully next time the w series team is racing in the virtual world they'll be able to actually compete in the event that's definitely a bummer for them and before we go off the air today we'd like to remind our viewers to like and subscribe to grit network here on youtube we just reached a special milestone 300 subscribers so thank you so much for your wonderful support and be sure to follow us on twitter facebook instagram and tiktok and invest in great network re re remember to take five minutes after the sh after our show and consider joining our patreon to keep us on the air beyond the 2022 racing season and click on the link in the video description below and you can buy a coffee for your favorite on-air talent here at Grit Network. Any amount will help us continue growing our motorsports media outlet. Visit public.com to stock market social media home. The link and referral code below will give you $5 to invest right away. Public.com will allow you to connect with your friends. You can make new friends and, and use tools how to and use tools that'll teach you how to properly invest in the stock market. And on, on the schedule coming up, be on the lookout for some World Rally Championship Rally Monte Carlo content from the team over the weekend. Very exciting seeing the WRC with the with the new hybrid cars, Sebastian Auger, Sebastian Loeb racing in the same rally again. Definitely very exciting. And on the in the, in the Principality of Monaco. And next week we're going to be covering the Formula E season opening doubleheader in Saudi Arabia and the IMSA Weather Tech Sports Car Championship season opener, the All Star racing event the rolex 24 at daytona for daniel zeri from racers the girls behind the helmet i'm kobe lambert for the podium finish thank you for watching it was a pleasure filling in today and we'll see you next time don't be an anonymous investor join the stock market social media platform public.com
Invest any amount of money and share with friends and new friends. Discover new opportunities, such as new companies and potential business partners, and useful tools for beginners. And share your experience with friends on Public.com. Link in the video description gets you five dollars for being a Grid Network viewer. Use the referral code GridNet for your free five dollars to invest. Start investing and networking on Public. Dot com.